you see, we're not worried about the house and the lawn these days, or, or the cat's balls or the weeds. We aren't worried about any of it. But you have to be, Mother. You have to be. Well, I'm sorry we aren't. Isn't that right, Titty? Yes, yes, that's right. Thank you. We know we haven't been attending to these things. We're not blind, and we haven't forgotten. In fact, it's just the opposite. We have chosen not to. Well, you have no choice in some things, Mother. You simply... Shut up and listen to me. All right, Mother, I am sorry. Well, that's better. We wish to do exactly as we please now. And in our opinion, we're entitled to. After all, there isn't much time. Oh, Mother, you've been saying that for years. Well, this time is the truth. Well, it's always been the truth. Not like this time. Isn't that so, Teddy? We've lived together, and now we're going to die together. What do you mean? What are you saying? Your father is saying we're going to kill ourselves. He wanted you to know. <sighs> this is very funny, Daddy. I'm sure this was your idea. You still think you can get me to move back down here, don't you? Rhoda, we don't want you to move back down here. That's the last thing we want. I guarantee you get in the way and screw the whole thing up. We just wanted you to know. We decided that was only fair. And besides, there are some arrangements that have to be made for you and for us. You're not serious. Yes. We are. You actually think that you are... Yes. We are. How are you going to accomplish this? I, su I suppose you have it all worked out. Huh? Yes. We do. I've been to see Dr. Petterman. <laughs> he says I'm a dead woman right now. It's only a matter of a short time. I'll know when, he says. It'll be plain, even simple, when it starts. When what starts, Mother? What are you talking about? Your mother is allergic to herself, to her own blood. Now, I can't pronounce the name of the thing if I try it, but uh, it, it, she's got it. And it, it's something, something semi or something, I don't, I don't know. Dr. Pediman told you this. My own blood has turned against me. If my mother were alive, she would die. Well, he must be wrong. Now, you look fine to me. We'll go see someone else. We already have. Your mother's telling the truth. We shouldn't have doubted him in the first place. He has wonderful hands, softer than Teddy's. I just don't believe it. I'm going to die, Ruda. Face up to it. If your father and I can, you certainly can. And nothing can be done about it. Well, it... What, uh, Daddy? What? Tell me. There, there was something. Petterman couldn't guarantee it would work, and even if it did, it wouldn't be for long. What, though? They could freeze me and change my blood. Like an automobile engine. Drain me, flush me out, and fill me back up. And that would do it? Maybe. If the cold didn't kill me, the new blood probably would. But it would be a chance. I haven't been in freezing cold in 40 years, and I have no intention of dying in an ice bucket in Westwood. And as for filling me up with someone else's blood, well... Well, what? Well, it is out of the question. Dwyer blood is Dwyer blood. My mother would do it if she were in your position. And for what? An extra month or two? Or even a year? I'm not interested in such a year. Neither of us is. Us? This is you talking to, Daddy? I've no intention of living alone at this point. Your mother and I have lived as one and will die as one. Ruda, would you like to know what it is we want to spare ourselves from? Dr. Petterman 
describes it as a kind of starvation death. I'll be half my size. A tiny figure, like one of my dolls, lying on a rubber sheet in some hideous cinder block building they'll call a hospital. It will be a figure you won't recognize, but you'll never forget. The miniature Dwyer that will be remembered will be one she never dreamt of, or knew, or cared to know, or would let herself know. No. I tell you, our answer is no. You're asking me to help <laughs> kill my parents. No, Ruta. We don't want your help. We don't need it. Just my consent. Yes. So we know what we leave behind. This is not you talking, Daddy. I don't believe... I can't believe this is either of you. Ruta, we don't want hospitals or homes and all that goes with them. And I don't want to be alone. I want you both to see someone now. I'm going to make some calls in the morning. Not in this house, you're not. Then I'll go to a motel. You can't stop us, Ruta. All I want you to do is talk to someone. What have you got to lose? Will you get out of here? Let us do as we wish. It is our right. Now leave us alone. I can't, Mother. Where's my suitcase? Oh, here. I can't, Mother! Go home and make a pot. Do something constructive. Dr. Fannin. So there's uh, nothing more that can be done. She looks so good. Oh. Well, I want them to uh, see someone then. No, no. Just someone they can talk to. Yeah. Do you have any names? Um, do you have the number? Thank you. Yes, I do. Okay, I will. Yes, thank you, doctor. Th yes, thank you. Bye-bye. to her like it does to us. I won't say a word. Well, that was my first mistake. I won't make it again. If we just want to be together, what's so hard to understand? I won't say a word. Nothing. Nothing. That's what, and that's what we'll be together. 